Uh oh. And about to go live. Stand by, everybody. Well, good morning, Rotary District 7770, and welcome to Conversations with Rotary Action People for Friday, October 9th. My name is Donald Hovis, and I am your CRAP host, and I'm from the Chicora Rotary Club in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. Today, we're going to do some virtual Tai Chi with Mr. Jan Agrest. Good morning, Jan. Hello, everyone. Hi, Donald. Thank you. It's good to be here. Good to see everyone. We're excited. We're excited to have you. Uh, this will be very interactive, and uh, we'll get to yeah. you in just a minute after a few short announcements. Sounds All good. Right. Introducing your C-Rap team. She's still sporting that purple wig. Bernie, you should have left one with me last week. I would have rocked it again today. Our public image chair for our Rotary District from the Five Points Rotary Club in Columbia, Mary Gass. Good morning, Mary. All right. Um, let's see. In the chat box, several of you have already introduced yourselves. Let's see. How about put your name, your Rotary Club, and yeah, you're waiting for the question of the day. Um, typically, Terry is running the stream, and I have time to do that. However, today we're going to allow you to just do your name, your Rotary Club, and what you're looking forward to about this weekend. So how about that? Put that in the chat box. And if you have any questions for Jan, uh, please put those in the chat box and I'll ask him um, at the end of today's session. So Jan, I know you're a Rotarian, but tell the, uh, tell the viewers here what club you're in. I belong to the Rotary Club of North Charleston Lunch. I am the club's immediate past president. Phew. That was a, quite a ride. It was fun <laughs> and um, it was, it's just as fun for it to be over. <laughs> but it's not really over. <laughs> gotcha. So uh, I think I know you're going to show us some stuff and do some virtual Tai Chi in a minute, but let's, let's go yes. through a couple questions first. Sure. So tell the viewers, how did you get into Tai Chi? Okay. So it's a bit of a, a bit of a story. Uh, my family, we were immigrants from former Soviet Union. I was 12 years old when we came to the States and a couple of years into it when I was 14, my parents thought it would be a good idea to put me into something healthy, something about being a teenager with a thick Russian accent, thought it would be good to be in a positive environment. And uh, they enrolled me into a karate school. And after a few, I was very lucky, first of all, my instructors are amazing for uh, not just teaching the martial arts, but teaching the people and being really good with individuals who they work with, really caring about using the martial arts as a means for growing the individual, for helping them improve themselves and be a better human being. So uh, a few years into doing so, uh, I realized that this is what I want to do for a living. And my instructor said that I should get into Tai Chi. I should also do the Tai Chi program because that's going to be most of my clientele as I get older. And so here I got into Tai Chi and I'm 17 years old and I'm moving slowly. I'm just thinking, boy, this is some really boring stuff. So it took me a few years to get into it. But once I got into it, some, about 10 years ago when I was 30 is when I feel like I, it became my favorite thing to teach and practice. Uh, it's, it's such an amazing experience. Uh, you can always get better. It's an incredibly deep subject. It's a, a, so, such a wealth of information uh, in it. And there's so many ways that it's beneficial to the human being. So now, now it's my favorite thing to teach and, and to practice myself. So why is Tai Chi so popular around the world and who benefits from it the most? I think the reason why it's so popular is because anyone can do it. Uh, there is uh, this element where you get away from no pain, no gain attitude and quite the opposite. You use feeling as a navigational tool to help you recognize the proper way to move. So in Tai Chi, if it feels good, that's how you want to do it. Of course, it's exercise and your, mu your muscle fatigues, but it more so encourages mind-body communication. So it's healthier and it, chances of one injuring themselves uh, are 
And honestly, it's the other way around. When you're in class, you have way less of a chance of injuring yourself than just being out in the world, just doing your day-to-day -day things because mindfulness is so important to it. The frontier in Tai Chi is not so much muscle gain as it is awareness. So like chi flow that you talk about in, in Tai Chi is the communication between the mind and body. And then many people today believe that when you're talking about the nervous system and the bioelectricity that the body uses for everything and chi, it kind of, you're just saying the same thing, you're just using different words. So it's beneficial to everyone. If you're 30 years old or older, is there anyone who's participating who's over 30 years old? A few people? Well, it will be beneficial to you for sure. And you can do it forever. I've, I've had clients in wheelchairs. I've had clients like 80 something years old who are just recovering from falling and are just really afraid of falling and, you know, and just got to really take it easy. And then I have individuals who are very athletic and just want to be more aware of their bodies, improve their balance, and, and lots of, uh, more, more importantly, just day-to-day -day life, the stress that it, that accumulates is so massive and has such detrimental effects on one's health. And Tai Chi, a major element of Tai Chi is stretching and meditation and the Qigong and breathing exercises that are just there to help teach the person how to relax. That's the first element of it. And uh, that, of course, affects the immune system and everything else. Incredibly valuable, especially in today's world. Never mind COVID. Just take care of just the stress of life, you know, just to deal with that. It's incredibly helpful. So how has COVID affected uh, how you teach Chai Chi and then your business in general? Yeah. <laughs> so the very, I, I remember it was Monday and I was getting ready to do, I had this huge, uh, contract with the North Charleston Senior Center. It's this amazing group of people participating. I'm getting ready to go. Uh, it's Monday. And, you know, uh, so far I've been sort of like, ah, oh, no, it's, it's going to be, it's no big deal. And then it's like that afternoon, I'm like, wow, uh, we're not in Kansas anymore. This is way different. Everything's closing down. And that very day, I picked up my tripod, grabbed my cell phone, went to Wanamaker Park here down the street, and did a live class for the participants who would normally do it. And I, in part, in major part, I did it for my own sanity, just to keep me doing something healthy. So I, I can't just, I, I'm used, my body's used to doing this every day, and I can't just stop and not. And I'm used to interacting with people every day. So I started teaching uh, online. Uh, and now I meet with a lot of students in person. I don't really do group classes anymore except for in the parks, outdoors. Uh, other than that, I do private lessons and like semi-private lessons, so smaller group. And I teach a lot online. So I have a, kind of a, this uh, hybrid of live interaction and um, pre-recorded videos that I made for the, for the students that include stretching and the Qigong exercises and actual learning of the forms and so on and so forth. So I uh, just had to make it work. I have two little kids and a wife and a family and, uh, you know, the bills are going and I just, it was necessity the mother of all invention. It made me, and actually I like it now. I like what I do a little bit more this way. It's smaller groups, more private lessons. But what I like more about it is instead of a group class where anyone can show up, I have specific slots where I know who's coming when. And it's a reserved spot. And uh, I group people together into, by their levels, by their skill levels. And we actually get more accomplished. Like it's, it's better for the instructor and the student. Uh, it was good how we used to do it. Now it's a different world. So, and a big thing, I really, I, I've been able to connect to some students who've moved away and live across country. And I get to see them once a week. And I do this kind of live interaction. I see them, they see me. And then I give them my pre-recorded videos to help them train on their own. We also have the opportunity to record the session for them, again, to deepen uh, their study. So actually opened up for a lot of opportunities. While I'm still functioning at maybe like 50, 60 percent of what it used to be, it's slowly creeping up. And um, my outlook is pretty positive about it. Thankfully, I, I, you know, I didn't stick my head in the ground and I didn't get depressed. And, you know, I have Tai Chi to thank for it uh, in major part that I just, I just kept teaching and, you know, kept breathing, kept meditating. And that really helps. So I'm very thankful to it. That's excellent. Is there a simple exercise for relaxation and stress release that you could show us right now? 
I am so glad you asked, Donald. I'm happy to do so. This is what I do with pleasure. So if I could, you'd want to stand up for this. You can do this seated, but standing is better. If you can stand up and still keep an eye on me, that would be best. You want to have your feet uh, about shoulder width apart and parallel, comfortable stance with the knees just under locked. And the first thing that I want to address with you is just breathing. And I want to talk you through what we call uh, belly breathing. So while we breathe, the chest and shoulders are going to stay relaxed. And on the inhale, the belly will balloon outward. That's on the inhale. And on the exhale, the belly will deflate. And just keeping the thought on the breath itself. Big belly on the inhale, palms just resting over the, over the belly button. And small belly on the exhale. And just keep breathing. Just keep your attention on the breath. I hope you're participating. Inhale, big belly. Exhale, let it deflate. And if you find your thoughts wander, that's okay. Just bring them right back to the breath. Just keeping awareness of the breath. Big belly on the inhale, small belly on the exhale. It is as if you're continuously asking yourself, how does belly breath feel to me right now? Balloon the belly out on the inhale and deflate it on the exhale. The fact is that belly breathing, in fact, lowers the center of gravity and helps you relax. Balloon the belly out on the inhale and allow it to deflate on the exhale. Keep the breath continuous. As soon as the exhale ends, allow the inhale to begin. So the inhale and exhale are equal in length. From here on the next exhale, let your arms drop. And on the inhale, your palms are going to float up in front. They're going to rotate about heart level and press up gentle stretch without locking. On the exhale, the palms rotate to face down and melt towards the floor. So you do that again. On the inhale, the palms turn to face upward, belly balloons. They rotate about heart level, press up, look upward, so gentle stretch for the neck. Then as you exhale, palms face down, and it's like you're pushing a ball downward into a pool of water that you're standing in. And rinse and repeat. Inhale, focus on the breath. The belly balloons outward as your palms float up. They rotate about heart level and press upward. On the exhale, palms rotate and face down. So now what's most important is what's going on in your mind and in your feeling. On the inhale, focus on the breath. Ask yourself, how does the belly breath feel to me right now? And on the exhale, this question is going to change. Instead of thinking about the breath so much, I want you to focus on the ground, to the bottoms of the feet. Focus on whatever evidence of gravity that you can feel on your body. And then again, inhale, focus on the breath. How does the breath feel to me right in this moment? The physical sensation thereof. And on the exhale, focus on the earth. How does the ground, how does gravity feel to me in this moment? You allow your energy to settle and bring yourself to a place of relative at rest. And again, inhale, focus on the breath. How does the breath feel to me right now? Press upward. Do not lock your joints. Hold for just a split second. And exhale, rotate your palms to face down and focus on the ground. And now it's like you're asking yourself, how does what's under my feet feel to me right now? Again, inhale, focus on the breath. Stick with me. It's going to feel amazing when you're done. Press upward, belly big, and exhale, focus on the earth. Like you're asking yourself, how does what's under my feet feel to my body right now? You're extending your consciousness below the surface of the ground and becoming aware of your root. Inhale, focus on the breath. Exhale, focus downward, like you're extending your consciousness underneath the surface of the ground, asking yourself, how does what's under my feet feel to my body right now? Let's do it three more times. Inhale, focus on the breath. The belly balloons outward, press upward, hold for a moment. And exhale, focus downward on the earth. Asking yourself, how does what's under my feet feel to me right now? Which causes your feet to also relax. Again, inhale, balloon the belly. How does the breath feel to you right now? Hold it for a moment and exhale, focus down on the earth. 
like you're moving your thought and feeling underneath your feet, under the ground, extending your consciousness to your root, to your stability. Again, inhale, focus on the breath. Shoulders relaxed, palms up. Hold breath full for a moment. And exhale, focus downward on the earth. You'll find your feet soften as you feel into the ground. I know I said three more times, but let's do just a couple more because it feels so good. Inhale, focus on the breath. Hold it full for a moment at the top. And exhale, focus on the earth. <clears throat> All right, last time, I promise. Inhale, focus on the breath. Hold for a moment. And exhale, focus downward on the earth. Place your palms over the Dantian, which is just below the navel. And just take a couple of more slow breaths, just keeping awareness of the breath itself. Bring attention to your energy being settled and thoughts a little bit more quiet. Recognize that as you become more relaxed, your awareness of yourself and everything around you increases. And so does your immune system. Take one more breath. And let your arms drop. Thank you so much for participating along, everyone that did so. So just take note of how you feel right now. We just invested maybe seven or eight minutes into just keeping attention on breath and very simple movement. It doesn't have to be anything complex. Tai Chi does get very complex, but it doesn't have to be. The beginning moves can be very, very simple. And the one thing I want to also add is this. I always do this little suggestion for all of my clients and everyone who I ever work with. Imagine this right now. Next time you're driving your car and you come to a red light, you have the compulsion to check your cell phone or to worry about the time that you're wasting. Instead, put one hand on your belly and just keep attention on the breath. So instead of getting yourself riled up about how much time you might be losing or using the cell phone, use that time for your health. In fact, you're driving, next time you see brake lights on the car in front of you and recognize it's traffic. And normally you would get all bent out of shape about traffic and all the time you wasted. But instead, this time, instead of wasting time, you get to invest your mental energy into your health simply by keeping your attention on the breath itself. That's clearing your mind and allowing yourself to be in the present moment. It is incredibly powerful, incredibly valuable. Probably the best thing that Tai Chi has to offer is right here, just in keeping attention on the breath. And if you're doing so and you're meditating on the breath and you recognize that your thoughts are wandering off, that's good. You become aware of your thoughts. That's wonderful. Use that as an opportunity to bring it right back to the breath. And the more you do it, the, more, the easier it becomes to become aware of your thoughts and to bring them right back to the breath. So you spend less time in that monkey chatter place where you're worrying about this or anxious about that. And more time bettering your health, relaxing your whole system, improving your immune system, and uh, increasing your circulation in your body and improving your state of mind and your emotional state. That's my story, and I'm sticking with it. So please practice it. Thank you so much. I'm, I'm impressed how many people participated. It's, it's a simple movement. Like I said, I teach this live like so. I meet people in person, and then I have pre-recorded videos that I offer to the students. So that way, a virtual, it's not as good as in person. You get to see my smile better if, if you are right here with me. And I get to uh, see your smile better. And I even get to give you a high five almost until we're allowed to. But this is ju almost just as good, especially if you take the time to practice on your own. Just a little bit of practice goes a long, long way. Well, thanks for sharing your passion with us, Jan. That was a, that was a great way to kick off a Friday. Um, we do have one question. Uh, we did some moving, but someone wants you to go through the first 25 moves. Oh, good. I'm happy to do it. Actually, there's, there's standardized form 24, called the 24. But a very popular form now is uh, called the 8. The 8 is great. 
it's a much, much simpler. It's easier. That's what I teach to all my clients nowadays. It takes about six months to a year to learn it well. And I'm happy to demonstrate it right now. Let me see if I can zoom myself out just a little bit with the marvels of technology. I think that should expand it as well too for you guys. All right, that should be pretty good. It takes about four minutes to complete this form to do it.
Thank you. Excellent job. Well, thanks so much for participating. Those of you that did, I really take that to heart. I saw many of you do it. Thank you so much. And I even saw someone uh, try to follow along with the form. It's a little bit like this. But that's the thing. Your, your awareness improves. Your coordination improves in, as a process. You know, I, you'll hear it like, oh, my balance is not good, so I'm not going to do Tai Chi. No, it's the opposite. Do Tai Chi to have wonderful balance. That's the point of it. Yeah, we have a viewer that says balance is the one reason I the one reason I love this. Yeah, and it's and even like uh, sometimes, and I use the word balance, but there's even a better way to say this to call it growing stability. It changes a little bit the state of mind on a balance. Kind of is that question is that going to be a balance? But a lot of all martial arts is like this, but especially Tai Chi is growing your root, developing your awareness of underneath the ground. And that's why this exercise is so wonderful. It really covers that, becoming aware of your stability and connection to the earth. That is huge. And that's why, you know, you know as human beings get older, falling is, is a topic of conversation. And Tai Chi addresses that so well. There are so many studies that, that show how just massive results in that regard. But it takes some practice. It's not a pill that you can just take and it's done. It, it, you have to put your heart into it and you have to try it. You have to work it. But the, I, I love it. I, and the older I get, the more I enjoy it. It's an incredibly deep and, and wonderful art that I'm, I'm just lucky that I got into it uh, early on. But it's never too late to start, that's for sure. Are you familiar with Dr. Paul Lamb and his Tai Chi for arthritis? And do you offer a similar type program? Yeah, uh, uh, I think that's out of uh, Australia. Uh, believe it or not, Australia has a massive Tai Chi uh, community. Yeah, um, yes, really all of Tai Chi is going to be good for arthritis. But the simpler things, like th this exercise uh, is called Two Hands Uphold the Heavens. And it's one of uh, what's called Eight Sections of Brocade, which is a very popular Qigong, uh, like standing, breathing meditation kind of uh, routine. And something like that that's not too complex is a wonderful way to start with. And if a client comes to me saying that this is, this is what they want to do, then absolutely. The other element, um, and let me describe this to you real quick. Tai Chi, you kind of see it broken down to three different areas. Uh, so first is the learning the form that, you just, that I just showed you. And, you know, in Tai Chi, you call it, you say you play it like the way you play a musical instrument. And the thing about playing a musical instrument is you got to tune it first. So the qigong, the stretching and the breathing exercises, and there's a whole series of joint rotations that are done for the knees, for the ankles, for the hips. That aspect, that third of tai chi practice is just to tune the system, the mind and the body to be well integrated within itself. So it's that third of tai chi practice is what's going to be really, really effective towards uh, arthritis. And then the third element would be partner work, which we don't get to do too much nowadays, but slowly but surely we'll get back into it. A partner work is incredibly, the push hands, push hands exercise, incredibly just so deep and fun and also teach communication, teach conflict resolution. The idea of when I'm pushed, instead of confronting, I listen and I follow and then I redirect and then I neutralize. So this kind of, it's a formula. It's like something right out of Dale Carnegie. First you listen to understand, then you follow and get on, on the bandwidth, understand what's, what's going on. Then you generate the rapport and start to redirect. If I really listen to the person who comes to me with a problem, I can say to them genuinely once I've listened and understood, I'm sorry this is happening. I'm sorry for my part in it. I want to be helpful. And then there's the opportunity to, to neutralize once all that's happened. It's the same. The physical movement becomes a metaphor for communication as well. So that's the push hands. So you got the form, learning the form. You got the joint rotation, stretching in the qigong. So that's just prepping. And then the push hands, which is the self-defense application of uh, everything that you uh, learned in the form. So it kind of it covers uh, lots of different areas. One more thing I'll say, uh, and uh, this is me showing off a little bit. One, uh, one of my favorite clients right now, we've been for, uh, working with them for about a year, is the monks of Mepkin Abbey. And in the beginning, I, 
had a little bit of a hard time kind of wrapping my mind around how I'm going to teach them the self-defense part because understanding the application also helps the mind be more involved in it, which is what it's about, getting the nervous system working. But come to find out, the monks of Mepkin Abbey are the most open-minded individuals to learn Tai Chi. They're all about meditation and they get it. It's amazing. Now the topic of conversation is, this is the perfect thing for pacifists to learn. It's really great because through training and cleansing my mind and body, keeping all of this healthy and functioning well, puts me in a place that if I am in a situation where not even I'm under attack, but I could be, it's a dangerous situation that could send me to a fight or flight. Instead, I breathe and I go to strategy. I look for ways to dissolve without fighting. A very, very famous uh, Chinese and Japanese martial art uh, statement, uh, proverb is the highest skill in martial arts is conflict resolution, winning without physically fighting. And when a person is very, very confident in their ability to defend themselves, they're much, much more easily able to make the kind of decisions that help uh, resolve the conflict without actually putting our hands on anyone. So the monks love that. It's, it's amazing. I had no idea that Trappist, ca Catholic monks, would love standing meditation and learning self-defense through Tai Chi Chuan. It's, it's amazing. Well, great. We, uh, we did have someone ask for your website, and that was posted in the chat box for that person that asked that question. So thank you for that. Uh, just want to, you, uh, you can't see the chat, but I just want to call out some comments here from some viewers. I've always wanted to learn Tai Chi. Thank you, Jan. Jan, thank you. I see so many similarities with ballet, balance, and stability, opposite sides of the same coin. I need to learn more on this side. Was that Robert? I bet that was Robert. That was, yeah. <laughs> Uh, see, he even knows who comments and he's not even looking. How about that? Um, uh, Bert, uh, we had someone say just an outstanding presentation, Jan. Oh, good. Thank you. I'm uh, glad you enjoyed last, it. I hope it helps memory because I don't think I would remember all those moves. And then someone followed up with you will. Yes. It is repetitive. So. That's same thing with balance. Yes, you do it to help improve. Actually, uh, Alzheimer's, dementia patients get so much out of it. Maybe I don't focus as much on getting them to memorize a whole lot of complex things, but the simple things, and especially when the person gains a little bit of confidence in remembering something small, it grows from there. It's an incredibly enriching experience to see that. Well, excellent. Thank you again for your presentation today. Thank you. Thank you everyone for tuning in. That was wonderful. And if anyone is interested, I'll do this shameless plug. If anyone's interested in learning virtually, I am here for you. I'm happy to help. Thank you guys so much. Thank you. Uh, a couple of announcements as we close down here on Friday. Uh, District Governor Pauline posted in the chat box that uh, you're invited to join the Myrtle Beach Rotary Club for their Rotary meeting on Monday, October 12th, Columbus Day. Uh, Rotary International Director Peter Kyle will be their guest speaker uh, on Zoom talking about peace building. Uh, if you need information on how to log in, it's on it's in DACDB in the calendar. Um, coming up for uh, next week, we do have on Monday, we are going to have a C-Wrap on Columbus Day. We're not taking a holiday. So uh, join us on Monday for Dan Rogers with the South Carolina Film Industry. As of right now, we do have an opening on Wednesday. We're looking to get that filled. Um, and then on Friday, we have Janet Carlson with the Surgery Center at Midlands Orthopedics. So those of you on here, you know, we're going we're gonna to continue to do this, but we're always looking for suggestions of speakers. So if you have someone uh, in mind, um, you can email myself, Mary Gask, or Terry Moore. And if you need our contact information, look back at Mary Gask's email that went out today. All of our contact information is at the bottom of that email. We also in DACDB as well. So we hope you have a wonderful Friday. Mary, you have something to say? Yeah, I was going to tell you that Carl Davis with the foundation is going to speak to us on Wednesday. I had mentioned that to Bernie and to Pauline. So Carl Davis will be with us on Wednesday. You don't want to miss that. Excellent. It'll be excellent. I was just going off the DACDB calendar. So, um, <laughs> Thank you for that update. 
So we'll have all next week completely filled. So in closing today, I will do the rotary four-way test. Of the things we think, say, or do, is it the truth? Is it fair to all concerned? Will it build goodwill and better friendships? Will it be beneficial to all concerned? Have a wonderful Friday and a great weekend. Good luck to those in Hilton Head with the mini golf tournament. And also I see Sandy may be doing a club championship. So good luck this weekend, Rotarians. Have a great weekend. We'll see you on Monday for the next conversation with Rotary Action people. Take care. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thanks, Sean. That was excellent.